YouTubers, two bets, and of course, crazy people. Um, this is a YouTube video about me doing YouTube. And I've been wanting to do this video for a number of years. And I guess today's the day. So here we are. I figured I'd break it up into two or three sections. Number one, I'll briefly go over how I got started on YouTube and the motivation to do it. Uh, number two, the pros and the cons of having a YouTube channel. And number three, maybe uh, give you some pointers or tips, if you will, if you're interested in starting your own channel or you've already got one and you're just looking for some, some more resources. So I don't pretend to be an expert on YouTube. In fact, quite the opposite. But I can lead you in the right direction as to where to find that information. So, how did I start a channel? I lived here in the Philippines for over two years and had no inclination of starting up a YouTube channel whatsoever. Um, I always figured that, number one, I didn't have anything really to say. And number two, um, I thought you had to have GoPros and stabilizers and drones and microphones and all this expensive equipment that I couldn't afford to do. And I just didn't see any point in it. I was doing Facebook videos and that was fine. That was staying in touch and giving information to family and friends back home. It was sufficing. And one day I did a video called Why I Moved to the Philippines and it seemed to impact quite a few people, including a number of vloggers. And without beating the whole story into the ground, um, a number of guys said, you really need to do a channel because of your content. Nobody else is doing what you're doing. And I took that as a compliment, but I still couldn't rationalize doing an entire channel. And then a guy asked if he could borrow my video and put on his channel. He's since passed away, a guy named Mike Kaysen. I forgot the name of his channel. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. But he put it on his channel and it got a bunch of views. And it got, are you ready for this? 999 comments. <laughs> and the first 998 comments were all really good. And then the very last comment said, yeah, I don't like this guy. <laughs> That was comment number 999. And so, anyway, these guys kept saying, Paul, you should do a channel, you should do a channel. And I kept pushing back and pushing back. And then one day, a gentleman by the name of Monty Crew, who has a channel called Monty's Lifestyle Crew, contacted me. He didn't live far from me. And was making the same sales pitch, if you will. And I said, Monty, bro, I don't know how to do it. I am an old man. I am technically challenged. I, I can barely turn on my computer, much less make or create a YouTube channel. He said, I've got you covered. He came over for two days, set up the channel. And the way that he sold me on doing a channel was this. He said, listen, man, one day... I want you to look at this, Paul, he says, as a video diary of your life. He says, you're gonna you've got kids, you're going to have grandkids, and you're going to have great-grandkids. And long after you're gone, your channel will still survive. And those kids, your grandkids, your relatives, people that you'll never meet and will never meet you, will still be able to see their great-great-great-grandfather. And that whole concept and idea really appealed to me and I said sold and so he set the channel up and he told me he said listen man um, I'll do everything for you all you have to do is record videos whatever comes to mind and I'll do your thumbnails I'll do your all the other stuff that needs to be done to get it out there and that's that that lasted for about a month and a half and then Monty had to go back to the States because his business was in a state of disrepair. He had to correct that. He helped me long distance for a couple of weeks. And finally he said, bro, I'm too busy to do this for you. Um, you're on your own. <laughs> so after about six months of really struggling with it, I did finally kind of figure out how to do a thumbnail, how to put the writing on it, uh, the correct size, the correct format, and uh, upload it and put what's called tags on it and 
all this other hoopla. So the mechanic part of it, I've pretty much got figured out, but it did take me longer than the average bear, believe me. Um, the pros and the cons of it. Well, for the, 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 the main thing is still the main thing. I have now a three year long video diary of my life here in the Philippines. And it never ceases to amaze me as to how I, I don't notice on a daily basis my life changing. But if I go back to some of my original videos or the first year compared to the second year, compared to this, the third year, how much my life has morphed and, and gone through such a metamorphosis. It's just incredible. And I am so thankful that I have it. I have all these memories. And I can remember, you know, the bikini days when girls used to come over to the apartment and I would interview them because they'd been swimming in my pool. And some of the hysterical stuff that they did. And the different crowds of people that I was hanging out the first year, and then the second year, and now the third year. And my girlfriend has gotten involved in it and started the channel. And I could belabor that for hours, but I won't. But that has been very satisfying to me to watch the change that I wasn't even aware of. It's kind of like when you look in the mirror every day, you don't see yourself grow older. But, you know, you look at a picture of when you were 20 and then you look at a picture of when you were 40 and you're like, wow, how'd that happen? <laughs> it's the same thing with the channel. It's just morphed into this dealio. And um, some of the pros have been, I would say primarily, other than now having recorded and captured this video diary of my life, um, has been the friendships and the connections that I've been able to make with people all over the world, all over the planet, have contacted me. I've had FaceTimes with them. I've had one-on-one -on -one conversations with them in person. I have long-distance phone calls with them without ever having met them in person, but I've developed these tremendous friendships with them. And there's been an opportunity since the category that I'm in is what's known as a macro influencer, that's somebody with 10,000 subscribers or more, I have noticed that there's been the opportunity to use the channel to influence outcomes. So one of the most prevalent ones has been the promotion of other channels. There's been channels that have been struggling and have been uh, working at it or just getting started and I've always been welcoming to have them come on the channel tell you guys what their channel name is what they're doing and hopefully kind of help kickstart them or give them an uptick in subscribers and views and that's been very satisfying something to kind of give back what Monty and the others gave to me um, there's been an ability to influence change in people's lives. Uh, I've interviewed people that have been very down and out. There's the most famous one is expat John. And with him, we were able, just by doing a video, um, this entire community of people came around, circled the wagons, and helped take John from one place and put him into another that will hopefully now be able to provide for his family back here in the Philippines. He's currently in America. He's working. Um, that, was, that was a challenge at best. But the aftermath of all of that is there is now this tight-knit circle of a support group that we formed, and I have lifelong friendships with guys that are head and shoulders above the average bear. These are guys with servants' hearts. These are guys that wanted to step up and with no ulterior motive other than to be helpful, helped a, a fellow human being. And now it's his job, John's, who I'm referring to is John, to carry the ball across the goal line. Whether he does or doesn't is really almost of no consequence because the 
the benefit that I derived from that and what others derived from that was men pulling together with a common purpose, with a common goal, with absolutely no agenda for their own self-promotion or their own self-enrichment and just helping another human being. And it almost brings a tear to my eye to think of how remarkable that's been. There have been people on my channel and on Baby May's channel for that fact that have been also down and out in their own ways. They've had issues with medical bills. They've had issues with uh, job loss, etc. And through the time, the talent, um, the treasures of people that have watched the channel and have been influenced by it, and they too reached out to those individuals and gave them a hand up. How amazing is that? Um, to be able to wake up in the morning and see the result of doing a simple video with a simple person who's got a simple problem, actually it's a complex problem for them, and have it get, if not solved, at least encouraged, is incredibly rewarding. So if you're thinking about doing a channel, um, I can't tell you how. <laughs> but I can put you in the right directions. I'll tell you what the pat the, the pat answer really is if you're thinking about doing a YouTube channel, here's the easiest way to do it. Go to YouTube and say, how do I start a YouTube channel? Just type that in and you will find, I don't know how many videos that will guide you step by step by step on what to do and how to take your pictures and how to format things. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy because it was hard as hell for me. I still don't understand half of it, and I still don't utilize most of the things that are supposed to make a channel successful. For example, the first two years that I did YouTube, it was done on an $80 Vivo phone with absolutely no microphone and a $10 tripod. Good news is I'm still using the $10 tripod. <laughs> but on year three, my Vivo finally pooped out completely. It just ran out of storage and it overheated. So I had to ink up and I bought a nice phone with a nice camera. Uh, I went through so many trials and tribulations with microphones, you won't believe. But I ended up the least expensive microphone, which is this one here, for 20 bucks works the best. And I tried the ones for two and $300 that were just nightmares. So... If you Google how to start a YouTube channel, they're going to tell you that all of the successful YouTubers have an opening screen, if you will, uh, an introduction screen. I'm sorry. I don't have one of those. <laughs> and then you're going to have your video, and they're going to direct you to all kinds of editing software and special effects. Well, I don't do editing, and I don't do any kind of special effects. Um, I just sit on my couch with Gaylord, my mascot. <laughs> so don't do what I say. No, do as I say, not as I do. And then you're supposed to have an end screen. And the end screen is kind of like, uh, well, you'll see it on other channels, you know, where they say uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a canned recording. And at that point, you're supposed to tell people, you know, if you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and maybe give you a preview of what's next. I don't do that either. <laughs> but that is the formula. Now, about subscribers is I ran two... I ran two... Uh, test videos on this and so I'll tell you this if you're looking for subscribers on your channel you have to ask for them that's the key uh, for the longest time I couldn't get to a thousand subscribers and I called Monty up and I said hey Monty man I got people watching me left and right but nobody's subscribing and he said well that's because you're not asking and I said really I said well if they don't don't 
won't they just subscribe if they like it? He goes, no, people need to be told what to do. So I said, well, all right. So when I was trying to get to 1,000 subscribers in the beginning, I would ask, please subscribe to my channel, you know, help support me and this and that and the other. And it worked, you know, well, people subscribed. I finally got to the magical 1,000 subscribers and I had the 4,000 watch hours. I didn't get monetized, which means running the annoying ads for four months after that because my channel was under review because I had one video up that was called uh, uh, Depression and Suicide and uh, the man buns wearing the skinny jeans over at Google thought that that might have been me encouraging that type of behavior and it took forever for them to review it. In fact, I had to go to Twitter to ask them to please review it because they wouldn't. And so finally, after about being on YouTube for over a year, did I get what's called monetized. So let's talk about that for a minute. Now you've gotten your channel monetized. It means you can earn money. How can you earn money? Well, the only way that I earn money here on YouTube is by those aforementioned annoying ads that come up. The ones you can skip after five seconds. And... Uh, of course, if you do watch the whole thing, I make more money, but hey, you know. <laughs> I don't blame you if you skip them. <laughs> or you can be a premium member. Premium members can watch YouTube ch channels, not um, watch any ads. And I think it's $9.99 or 10 bucks. You don't pay it to me, you pay it to YouTube. And that lets you watch all the YouTube you want without commercials. But the creator gets paid the same as if you did watch the commercials. So actually, if everybody on this channel was a premium member and they watched all of my video, then I would make, I don't know, 100 times more money than I make now. There's other opportunities, however, that I've never taken advantage of. Number one is memberships. You can do memberships where I guess you put up, again, I don't really know because I've never done it, but you can do different levels of membership. And it gives little perks to whoever um, subscribes to your channel and becomes a member. And then you can do a thing called Patreon, which is sort of like uh, you do extra videos. It shows behind the scenes or how you make a video or it's just extra stuff. And people pay a monthly fee for that. You can do affiliate marketing. I don't do that either. <laughs> affiliate marketing is after you hit a number of subscribers, usually around 10 or 20,000, companies start to contact you. They've contacted me and said, hey, would you like to promote this, this dating site? Would you like to promote this insurance company? Would you like to promote this widget? Would you like to promote this microphone? And blah, 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 blah. Well, as I stated in the beginning, my YouTube channel is for me to do as a personal diary I'm not interested. The, the income is an unintended consequence. It's, I do make money off of videos, but only from the AdSense money. Um, I do not have Patreon. I do not have memberships. I do not have affiliate marketing. I do not do sponsorships. I do not do, do commercials. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm just saying that's how I roll. I do this as a hobby. I do it for joy. I do it for the fact that I can maybe possibly have a positive influence on someone's life. I can have a good time. You can come along for the ride. I've got a record of over 400 videos now that I can reflect on. My grandkids can find out why they're so screwed up in life because they'll see the kind of DNA they came from. <laughs> so they'll realize why they're having such a tough time in life <laughs> 30 years from now. And um, that's about it. Oh, and guess what? I never ask for subscribers. I don't have a subscribe button that pops up anywhere on my videos. Um, I have an end screen that comes up that takes you to the next video or a suggested video and my playlist. And that's just more or less for convenience for you. Um, but no, I don't have an introduction. I don't edit. I don't have an end screen. I don't ask for subscribers. I figure if somebody likes it, they'll subscribe, and if they don't, they won't. I did, as I mentioned before, two times I ran an experiment, and I did ask for subscribers, and I got news for you. It worked. I got like 5 to 6% more subscribers. 
And after I did it and I ran the experiment, I said, well, that's okay. I still want people to subscribe just because they like it, not because I'm telling them to. So hopefully this is a little bit uh, informative for you. My prediction is that this video will get very few views, but I'm interested to see what happens. I don't think the topic is something that's really going to appeal to a wide range of people, but that's okay because I'm doing this video because I want to. All right, I'll see you in the next video.